Hello sports fans, this is Stephen Hill for JustMyPicks.com and I bring you a special top 10 list of the top 10 college quarterbacks that are projected to go into the NFL. I have a lot to get into. I'm going to go uh, from 10 to number 1 to the top 10 quarterbacks that you need to know that's going to be in the NFL draft this season. Coming up, um, number 10. I want to start out with A.J. McCarron, senior quarterback from the University of Alabama who's won national championship after national championship and he's done it year in year out done a lot of great things for this university in the fold he's been looked at as a, a, a quarterback game manager for most of his career Nick Saban has not really left the reins off of AJ that much since we've seen him but his senior year he looks like he's gotten the reins taking off significantly looking at his body of work yes he is a good college quarterback when it translates to the NFL will he have a chance to do well will he have a chance to shine out and show his true talent that remains to be sold but he's number 10 I look at him right now as being a possible fourth or fifth round draft pick he, he makes a lot of good throws. He just doesn't have that body of work to show that he can air out the ball each and every game. We've seen him at a predominantly run game school with Alabama. They usually get a lot of good running backs who can pound the rock in between the tackles and even bounce outside the tackles. I see him at best as a fourth or fifth round draft pick. Coming in at number nine, we have Steven Morrison from the University of Miami. Coming in at 6'2", 218. He's a lot smaller than I expected. A lot. He, he, he plays a lot smaller than his frame is. When you look at him on TV and see him, He's not really one of those guys that stands out to you on a on a very high basis. He has had injuries in the past that will affect his draft stock. I have him also as being a fourth round, a solid fourth round draft pick out the U. University of Miami quarterbacks generally don't do well in the NFL. They usually get there and disappear. I think Morris has a chance to really do some good things. Being that he's come and carried a University of Miami franchise or, or college, if you will, that really has been hit significantly with NCAA fines that speaks to his character, that speaks to his talent and what he can do with the pieces around him. And you don't really have the talent level that you had back in the day around the University of Miami because of those penalties. But... He has done a solid job this year in leading the Hurricanes and doing a great job. Uh, and he's been a solid four-front draft pick. I see him fitting in right in there. Coming in at number eight, no, Logan Thomas for Virginia Tech. He's probably physically the most gifted when I look at him being 6'6", 254, playing for Frank Beamer will teach him a lot of disciplines. We know we've seen a lot of good things out of him this year. Even in that loss versus Alabama, you have to look at it. It wasn't his fault what was going on around him. He didn't have a lot of people that showed up to play with him. Even looking at his play throughout the season as as they progress, I've seen them pick up a lot of big victories, a lot of good a lot of good game footage that he's been doing throughout his Hokie career. He still is raw. Uh, still a raw talent, a project quarterback, if you will. But at, at 6'6", 250 plus, you know, that is a strong, strong quarterback size in the NFL. And, and GMs, there's a GM out there that's going to take a chance on him just from his size alone, just because he's raw, physically talented, he will be able to get the job done somewhere. I believe that he's a high fourth round pick. And I feel like he'll get drafted there. Coming in at number seven, Zach Mettenberger of LSU. Another one of those big 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six guys with the body weight, things like that. When you when I saw him at Georgia, he wasn't as good as he is now at LSU when he started out his uh, college career. But I will tell you this, Mettenberger has slowly opened up out of that cocoon shell and really showed a lot of his personality. At best, I see him as a third-round draft pick. He doesn't have the accuracy that you usually want for a quarterback. He is still raw. Les Miles is doing a lot of things to help him and work with him on that. We've seen with the emergence of Jeremy Hill coming back to LSU. That's taken a lot of the burden off of him to make a lot of big plays downfield. He does have significant wideout help at LSU. He may not have that in the NFL, so you have to look at what teams possibly could need a pocket passer. He does have a little speed on him, but I wouldn't call him a dual threat quarterback. He has the Andrew Luck type speed where he has the ability to run, but he doesn't run that often because it's not needed because his arm gets the job done or the run game around him gets the job done. So looking at it as as a solid third round pickup, I do see him possibly creeping into the second round. You know, the quarterbacks are a dime a dozen in the NFL, getting a young talent out of college that you can really groom and get to your type of offensive system is always a great find for a head coach. So I have him going in the third round. Coming in at number five, this is really peculiar, peculiar, peculiar for me, but Aaron Murray of the Georgia Bulldogs. It is he has some good games. He has some bad games. When he faces teams that are elite, it seems that brings out the worst in his game. Even just 
recently has he come out of that shell and started winning against some good teams that were ranked or primetime games, but his overall record speaks for itself. He wins the games against nobodies that he's supposed to win, like the Vandys, like the Kentuckys, like the North Texas teams. But when it comes to playing teams like Alabama, he just doesn't get the job done when you expect him to. I don't know what it is. I don't know if that's that pressure, but good thing for Aaron Murray. He has four years, almost four, four years of college tape. So a lot of people will feel more comfortable taking chances with him a lot of people could say that he didn't have the full uh, mix of weapons around him for the games that he was in but he did keep the Georgia Bulldogs in a lot of those close games it wasn't all bad it wasn't all good I see him as being a second or third round pick being that he has the talent to get it done being that he hasn't reached his peak I feel like with him setting all the SEC records for the most passing yards and things like that this will be a lot of those padded stats that he could use in an argument to say hey don't draft combine I can make a lot of throws that the other guys can throw anybody looks good in shorts and pads you know anybody looks good without 300 pounders chasing them or 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 cornerbacks coming off the corner blitzing them anybody can make passes but in the SEC he's doing it and doing a great job at it. I see big things in his future for his NFL career. I think that he'll get talent around him that he can depend on that stays healthy each and every week. So coming in at number five, that's where I feel Aaron Murray is. Coming in at number four, you got to look at Taj Boyd, 6'1", 225. He needs to little, lose a little bit more weight to be in the NFL, uh, transfer a lot of that body fat into muscle. But we've seen him I see him as a first round, late, late first round pick, probably possibly the 30th or the 29th pick for whoever's there because Taj Boyd brings athleticism. He brings a, a, a certain fearlessness to the football field. Yes, he's led Clemson to a solid season so far. We're going to see what they do against Florida State this weekend, but before this game, I'm seeing that Taj uh, Boyd is a solid quarterback that I would want on my team. You see him take big shots. You see him week after week come up, get back up off the field, get back off the ground and really bounce back and play well in a lot of these games. So I'm picking Taj Boyd to go in late first round. His only problem is he has all these quarterbacks in front of him that potentially could outshine him at the NFL Combine or in different areas. He doesn't have the speed you want for a quarterback, mobile quarterback, but he gets the job done. If you need third and short, third and fourth, he can possibly sneak those few yards in there if he has a solid line behind him. This is the big question. Can a short quarterback at 6'1 see over our offensive line and really get the job done? Only time will tell. Drew Brees has a that's a perfect example. Drew Brees, a lot of people say that he's not tall enough to get the job done, but you see year after year, Drew Brees has significant passing yards, significant touchdowns, and he still gets the job done. And I think that at 29 or 30th in the NFL draft, he could be taken in the first round. Coming in at number three. Heisman Trophy winner Johnny Manziel, and I say this because you know a lot of those NFL knuckleheads, that's GMs and things like that, are not going to give Johnny Manziel his just due. Johnny Manziel is just flat out balling. He does have it against him that he's 5'11", 210, but 5'11", 210 in the SEC wrecking ball, all those defenses putting up 600 yards of offense, doing all these little things that Johnny Menzel does makes him a pure talent. I would take him in, in one of the first overall picks in the NFL draft because I feel like he brings star power. He brings attitude. He brings pizzazz. He brings all the things you want in a quarterback. Even though he may be a little immature, look at what he's done on the football field. We look at that blowout game they had against Oklahoma in the Cotton Bowl. You look at what he did the first time around in Alabama when they won. Look at what he did a second time against Alabama when they lost. Even better game the second time around versus Alabama. I look at some of the, the key games that he's used, his uh, his leg and he's really gotten out. Look at Ole Miss when he got hurt. He came back strong with a vengeance and led Ole Miss to that victory late in that football game. Just look at his body of work and you'll quickly see why Johnny Menzel is nicknamed Johnny Menzel and why he has a Heisman. He's earned everything he's got at Texas A&M as far as accolades with quarterback awards and with Heismans. I expect him to win the second Heisman in a row because there's not a better quarterback in college football right now than Johnny Menzel. And I feel like a first round grade mid to mid 10 to 20 is a solid pick for Johnny Menzel. When I look at the grand scheme of things, college football is just going to be so packed with quarterbacks this year. So Johnny Menzel fitting in at number three right now it is a first round pick. It's solid in my book. Coming in at number two, Marcus Mariota, 6'4", 2, 212 from the University of Oregon. When Chip Kelly left, I thought that this guy would drop off. I thought that Marcus would not find his way. He would not be able to keep up the up-tempo, not be able to keep the plays lively and fresh on the field, but I was wrong. You know, Oregon has transformed themselves, and they're the same Chip Kelly team, just a different head coach. 
you know, and in the grand scheme of things, Marcus Mariota may not be big on the on the NFL level, but in college he is doing the darn thing. He's getting the job done for the University of Oregon, not turning the ball over a lot, creating plays when nothing's there, stalling and running around while his teammates are trying to get open and delivering solid passes. Also, having a lot of playmakers around you at University of Oregon also helps you look good. Also, I just don't see him doing what he's doing on the college level, transcending to the NFL level. I think it's a little too small being weight-wise. I don't feel like he has that presence to step up in tight games. I haven't really seen him play well, extremely well, in a big game against a top-tier talent. Yes, they can blow out Colorado. Yes, they can blow out these teams 72-0, almost score 100 points in college football games. But on the NFL level, level, he won't have that much big difference in talent. You know, and they can play Division One AA teams all they want. If they can't beat teams in the NFL, you won't have a job for long. The NFL, yes, it's a great company, but the NFL also stands for not for long if you don't get the job done. I see him as a top 10 talent because he gets the job done on the college level. But again, I don't have faith in him translating this to the NFL level. He can do all these things at Oregon. They can be kings of the Pac-12. Do it all you all you can in college. But on the NFL level, it will be different. You won't have that big of a difference in talent that you're going against. Number one is kind of a deceiving factor for me. Teddy Bridgewater of the Louisville Cardinals. The conference that they play in is trash. The level of talent that he's playing against is trash. I don't respect any team that's in the division he's in. Even though he makes good throws, even though he has accuracy, you can see the accuracy. He's going to be the top quarterback taken nine times out of ten overall because he doesn't come with baggage. Being 6'3", 205, projected. I haven't seen him in person to, to verify this, but looking at what he's done against a mediocre talent, yes, I would say that that game versus Florida last year, they did whip Florida pretty well, and he did hold up against SEC talent in one game. But I want to see what he does more or less against this year's bowl game. If they make a BCS title game or if they make a BCS championship game for Tostitos Fiesta Bowl or the Rose Bowl or the Sugar Bowl or something like that, I want to see him do that against another top tier talent. We haven't seen him really be faced with a lot of pressure this year. And being that they've been able to skate through on a very easy schedule not a single team on there are they not favored in a game against they haven't really done anything against a top top team yes they beat Kentucky which is an SEC team but Kentucky's not really a contender for a national championship or a contender to win the SEC East at all so Teddy Bridgewater gets the, the number one top spot and I believe that he has talent I believe that he possibly could transcend to be the best quarterback out of this quarterback draft class that's coming up in 2014 2015 class so looking at the grand scheme of things I really like Teddy Bridgewater's game I would just like to see him against a lot more talent the the conference that he in is in college once again I must say is hot garbage it's not a single team in there that I feel like should be anything above in a BCS title game or anything like that um he, I don't think he should get a Heisman vote only because the competition he's playing against is so weak. Me or you could average the numbers Teddy Bridgewater is putting up. Not trying to knock his talent level that he has as a person, but against who he's facing, I could throw up 300 yards a game. I could, you could, in a wheelchair, throw up 300 yards a game against these college kids he's playing against. I just don't see the level of talent, but that's my top 10 quarterback list for the 2014 draft coming up the top 10 quarterbacks that I felt like either stood out or either have chance to do something big in the NFL level that have done it in college let me know what you guys think of my list did I leave somebody off did I not put somebody on here that you feel like should be check me out at justmypicks.com you can also follow me on Twitter at justmypicks.tv also check me out on YouTube YouTube backslash justmypicks.tv also, join our debate group, Facebook, backslash JustMyPicksTV. Let me know what you guys feel. Please share and comment on all my videos. Thank you very much.